Danny Lopez is a native of Chicago. He grew up in Humboldt Park in a home where drugs, alcohol, gang activity, and even witchcraft were prevalent. At the age of 13, God's grace changed the course of his life, and he graduated from Moody Bible Institute with a degree in Bible theology. And he's well known in Chicago for 25 years of youth ministry. Guys, would you please welcome with me Pastor Danny Lopez. Thank you, sir. What up, y'all? Because I'm with uh, a bunch of men, not boys, right? I love it when I hear strong male voices. Hoorah! You know what I'm saying? I've never been in the armed forces. However, when the moment you become a born-again born believer, you're in the armed forces. Yeah, we're in the battle. So I'm going to ask you guys to do me a favor. I want you to help me to continue to praise the Lord. I know it's morning. That's why we need to do what the Scripture says. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I'll give you the urban translation. Clap your hands, all y'all, and shout. Ah, 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 ah. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Not yet. See, because I know y'all, you're going to give what's called, you're going to do what's called a convenient praise. That's called a patty cake praise. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I want us to do one, two things. When I count to three, we're going to get up on our feet and we're going to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Because we're not losers, we're winners. We're not weenies, we're men, all right? One, I want to make sure that you understand what we're doing. We're going to clap our hands and we're going to give God a sacrifice of praise. Not a patty cake praise, but a sacrifice of praise too. I want you to make sure that you put on a mindset. I am determined to get as close to Jesus today as possible. So I'm going to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Why, a lot of us are in trouble. A lot of us are struggling. A lot of us are, are fearful. A lot of us are bound. It's time for you to shout unto God with a shout of praise. Two and a half. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Three. Go ahead. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Exalt you, Jesus. Come on. Give him a little bit more. Give him a little bit more. Give him a little bit more. God, that's up to you. Lord, that's up to you. That God, that's on you. Jesus, this is for you. Hallelujah. 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 Grab the hand of your neighbor to your left and to your right. Grab the hand of your neighbor to your left and to your right. I want you to squeeze it. Come on, squeeze it. Let them know I'm right here, brother. I'm right here. We're going to do a simple little prayer. I'm going to repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus. speak to us. Speak to us. For, your For your servants are listening. Jesus, Jesus. Bless, us. bless us. We need it. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give someone a high five. Say, oh, you better get ready. Come on. High five. God bless you. You can be seated. I got to set my timer on. It was a couple of months ago that I was watching... Uh, a video on Sylvester Stallone. I like Sylvester Stallone. I watched every, pretty much almost every movie he's made. He's, he's a strong influence in my life. This 15-minute documentary was a short story about the beginnings of his movie-making career. But he said when he, he, he grew up with a real rough dad, his dad was really rough. And he said when he was around 11 years old, he was skinny, 
scrawny. He said there was nothing really to him. It was just a, 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 a skinny little kid. So he went to the movies with somebody. And he went to go see Hercules Unchained with Steve Reeves. You guys know who that is? Who that is? Steve Reeves, Hercules Unchained. There was one point in the movie when Sylvester Stallone said, he said, uh, he, he was watching, and that's when Steve Reeves was between two big, two big uh, 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 pylons, and, and he, had, he was chained up, and Steve Reeves did the move. Y'all know what I'm talking about? He did the pose. Boy, was buff. Huge, massive Hercules. And Sylvester Stallone said, 11-year-old boy, he looked at the screen, he pointed to the screen, and he says this, that's it. That's what I want to be. And then he said, that's a man. That's what I want to be. That's a man. He saw the image that changed his life. Sylvester Sloan said that he, after the, after the movie, he ran home as fast as he could. He went into his backyard and he started picking up heavy objects. And he started curling. And he started lifting. And he would find something else a little heavier. And he would start curling. And he would start lifting. He said he hasn't stopped yet. 76 years old and he's still as buff as can be. All because of one image. One image that he saw that made sense to him. That's it. That's what I want to be, he said. That's a man. What image do you need to see that will spark a drive inside of you to strengthen you to be the man that God has called you to be for his glory in these dark days? You need to see more sex You need to see more money. You need to see the car. What image do you need to see to spark a drive in you? That's what today's all about, boys. It's time to muscle up. That's what that should have been the title of this message. Time to muscle up. Stop being a punk and a weenie. Just saying. Too many women are taken over. I ain't got nothing against women. Married 41 years to my, my, grand, my grammar school sweetheart. I've only had one woman in my life, Serene. That's it. That's all I need. But it's time that we step it up. I've been, dude, listen, I study manliness. I study masculinity all the time. And we have a lot of women who are stepping up because men are stepping down. It's not that they have to, it's that they need to. Because there's too many boys in our culture. Man boys. It's time to turn that around. Well, while reading scripture, I'm, I came across 2 Chronicles chapter 23. And now that, man, you find masculinity all over the scriptures, y'all. Check this out. Go to 2 Chronicles chapter 23. Come on, turn on your Bibles and flip it over to 2 Chronicles. Yeah, that's in the Old Testament. Second Chronicles chapter 23. Come on now, when you got it, say, come on now. Second Chronicles chapter 23. When you got it, say, come on. Well, you guys are fast. Anyone else? I'm, wi- I'm willing to wait. I read from the New Living Translation. It's easy for me. I, I'm, I'm a simple guy. I'm not complex. The NLT translation, it says something like this. In the seventh year of Athaliah's reign, Jehoiada, the priest, decided to act. He summoned his courage and made a pact with five army commanders. How many army commanders? These are the names of the boys, Azariah, the son of Jehoram, Ishmael, the son of Jehoanan, Azariah, son of Obed, I like that, Obed, it has a punch to it, Messiah, son of Adaiah, and Elishaphat, son of Zikri. Verse 2, these men traveled secretly 
throughout Judah and summoned the Levites. <sighs> summoned the worship leaders. Summoned more priests. Summoned the Levites and clan leaders in all the towns to come to Jerusalem. Verse 3. They all gathered. I want you to picture with me all these brothers, leaders, clan leaders, worship leaders, men of God, gathered together. <laughs> they, all, they all gathered where? At the temple of God. Kind of like us today. Where they made a solemn pact with Jose Joash the young king, Jehoiada said to them, to all the clan leaders, all the Levites, all the commanders, he said to them, here is the king's son. Here is the king's son. I love that. The time has come for him to reign. The Lord has promised that a descendant of David will be our king. Every man needs a leader. Every man needs a ruler. Jehoiada, Jehoiada, the priest, that's really what I want to focus on. See, he, he had some backbone. See, because there was a woman by the name of Athaliah. Her name actually, she's known as Bloody Athaliah. Woman that was wicked. She was an alpha woman. Others call women like that, called boss lady. I'm serious. That's what's, that's what's going on right now in the culture. Bloody Athaliah was married to a weenie of a, of a husband. A man with no backbone. She stepped all over him. And all of a sudden he dies and then his son takes over. He only reigns for a little while. Her son dies. You know what this woman does? She kills off. All of her grandchildren, all of them, murders them to make sure that no one, no one, no man will take the throne because she wants to be the boss lady. She wants to run the town. She wants to take over. She wants to snap her fingers and everyone come bow to her. She wanted to be the queen mother. She wanted to take over the land, the land of Judah. She had no business on the throne, y'all. Because there was a promise that had to take place that the seed of Abraham, the seed, the promised seed will come through the lineage of David. She said, uh-uh, I'm the seed. I'm in charge. I say what goes on. She was an intimidating woman. It's interesting. I've been reading lately that women who intimidate men don't really are intimidate. Women who intimidate men are not really intimidated, they are just, how do I say this with some kind of niceness? We should never, men, we should never be, into, you know what the word intimidated means? It means you're, you're being put down. You feel less than, less than. No one should ever make us feel less than anything. We're the ones with the shoulders. We're the ones with the strength. We're the ones with the vision. We're the ones with the ideas. We're the ones with the creativity. We're the ones with, my wife one time told me, my wife's four, four foot 11, right? Powerful woman, four foot 11. And, and I asked her one day, I said, so Serene, I called her Lovey. I said, so Lovey, why do you, I get that from Gilligan's Island. Remember how, listen. I said, I say, uh, <laughs> I said, so Lovey, I said, why, why, why'd you marry me? She goes, she goes, it's your shoulders. She goes, I like your shoulders. She said, I need broad shoulders. I said, oh, it's not the stomach? She said, no, it's the shoulders. Women are looking for men with strength. Women are looking for men they can lean on. Women are looking for men that can, that can help them lead. Women are looking for men that will give them a platform. Athaliah, she just took it. Jehoiada, the priest, after seven days, he said, enough is enough. 
In the seventh year, seven years as bloody Athaliah was reigning. In the seventh year, Jehoiada the priest decided to act. Here's the first part. I, I, I just want to take the next few moments, guys, and, and help you understand that it's time. The time has come to set ourselves up for future impact. The time has come for us to set ourselves up for the future impact. Go to verse 1 again. I want you to see this with me. After seven years, seventh year of Athaliah's reign, Jehoiada the priest, Jehoiada the priest. I want us to stop right there. The first thing we need to understand is this. Number one, you got, yo, listen, you need to know who you are. Understand your identity. Understand your identity. You are not your race. You may be Italian, you may be Polish, you may be uh, uh, Puerto Rican, black, Asian. That's not the point. That's just whatever language, what kind of, whatever kind of food. I mean, God should have made me Italian. I love Italian food. Mm-hmm. Has nothing to do with your race. Has nothing to do with your calling. Who are you, man? Jehoiada knew who he was. He was a priest. The, the Bible here has nothing to say about his last name. It says Jehoiada the priest. In the streets, my brothers were gangbangers. I was not. I was too much of a wiener to do that. There's something about a knife going into my body I didn't like. So I didn't gangbang. My brothers did all the gangbanging for me and my sister. But one thing was true on the streets. We're talking the 70s and 80s. One thing is true in the streets, it's not, at least in the hood. If you were part of a gang and you were approached by someone else in the gang, they would ask you this one question. What you be about? What you be about? What's your business? In other words, what's your identity? What colors are you representing? You got to represent something. You got to be part of a, you got to be part of a nation. You cannot be a neutron. Gangbangers hate neutrons. You guys know what a neutron is, right? You're neither, you're, 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 you're not, you're not nothing. You're just, you're just there. You can't just be there. You got to represent. Isn't it interesting? That God, in a sense, says the same thing. He says, you're either hot or cold. You're either hot or cold. Don't be no stinking neutron. You can't be lukewarm. You got to represent. Know your identity. What is your I am? When I was a boy, and all throughout high school and my early 20s, my middle name, I don't have a middle name. I gave myself a middle name. It was Danny Stupid Lopez. Totally serious. I am not a taste taker, test taker. I can't stand taking tests. When and in freshman year algebra, I failed, pretty much failed every exam. I tried to study. I hate math. Anyone know what I'm talking about? I can't stand math. I know one plus one. Don't take me any farther than that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not stupid. I just don't like numbers. So English, chemistry, all those classes, I would pass with C's and D's. The only class I ever got A was in gym and art and music. I aced those because I'm an artist. I gave myself a name, Danny Stupid Lopez. So I would, every time I would make a mistake, I was like, I'm so stupid. I'm so stupid. I can't believe I'm so stupid. One day I said that to my wife. I, was, I did something bad in the house. And my mom, like, man, I'm, I can't believe I'm so stupid. My wife looked at me. She says, don't you? She says, you need to stop doing that. You need to stop saying that. You're not stupid. My wife rebuked me. You're not stupid. You're my husband. So what is your I am? Who are you? What you be about? Because, see, your identity will determine the decisions that you make. I am what? A born-again believer. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, my Lord. I am a son of God. I am saved. I am pulled out of darkness and walking in his marvelous light. What you be about. Know your identity. This is not a job title, man. It's a calling. You're called. You know what the word called in, in the Bible means? It means divine invitation. 
You've been divinely invited by God to be part of his body. He didn't ask you your condition. He just said, come. I invite you to be part of my body. I'm inviting you to, oh, I'm inviting you to, oh, I'm getting so excited I can't even say it. I'm inviting you to allow me to tattoo my name on your heart. I want you to be a part of me. I don't need your gifts. I don't need your talents. I don't need your name. All I need is your heart. Give me your heart. Give me your lusts. Give me your passions. Give me your dreams. Give me your brokenness. Give me everything about you. Give it to me. And I will call you my own. What you be about. Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada the priest. His priesthood elevated something inside of his heart that said, now is the time. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, Matt. See, because you got to understand, a priest is a man of God. A priest understands that he is to lead people to God and intercede for people. A priest has a relationship with God. Therefore, he is obligated to listen to God and be obedient to the Almighty God. A priest lives by a different moral code. When you understand what you be about, when you understand your, 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 your title and your calling, it sets up boundaries. A priest lives by a different moral code. His code is of life. It comes from the kingdom of the living God. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 says this. In case you don't know who you are, the Holy Ghost, writing through Peter, says this. You are what? Living stones. What are you? What are you? Is anyone here? What are you? You see, I'm, I'm 61 now. I have that thing to tinnitus. So I'm seeing your mouth moves, but I can't hear you. What are you? Come on, man. Snap your finger when you say that. <laughs> you are living stones that God is building. God is what? You are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What is God building? Wow. What's more, Peter says, you are, second, second identity, you are his holy priests. What are you? I can't hear you. So number one, you're what? Living stones. Number two, you're holy priests. That's what you be about. Now watch this. What is this is what we do. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you, that's us, living stones and holy priests, we offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. We offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. What is spiritual sacrifices? Two things. Thanksgiving and praise. Thanksgiving and praise. Guys, brothers, fellow warriors, stop complaining. Can I say that again? We complain way too much. Stop complaining. Whether it's your body, your job, your car, your wife, your kids, your neighbors, stop complaining. Politi I'm, not, I, I'm not that much into politics, but I know enough. I better not complain. If I don't like what I see, do something about it. Vote. But stop complaining. Complaining is of the devil. Complaining says to God, what you're doing is not good enough for me. We're, 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 we're living stones the architect is Jesus Christ. He's putting us in our place to make us holy priests so that we can offer spiritual sacrifices unto God. That's our obligation. That's our calling. We are to give God thank yous. The moment you get up in the morning, ha, thank you, Jesus. 
being religious fanatic. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me life. Thank you, Jesus. I do this every morning. Thank you, God, for my bed. Thank you for my blankets. Thank you for my sheets. Thank you, God, I live in a nice apartment. Thank you, God, I have a car that works. Thank you, God. Thank you for the shoes on my feet. Thank you for my socks. Thank you, God. Today, I feel good. I'm not lying. That's the honest to God truth. We offer spiritual sacrifices to please God, man. Why? Because you are a living stone and you are a priest called by God to give him praises and thanksgiving. Number two, what Jehoiada did after he finally realized, listen, I am a priest of the Lord. I have an obligation. He made a clear decision. He made a clear decision. It's not rocket science, guys. He made a clear decision. This woman, her reign's got to end. Bloody as the lion's got to go. She's destroying my present life, and she's going to jack up my future. And Jehoiada, the priest, the Bible says, decided to act. He made a decision. Make good choices and do what is right. The basis of our identity forces us to do what is right in God's sight. Look at James chapter 4, verse 17. What James says, so whatever, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is a sin. Ooh. Do I need to read that again? Thank you. I'll do it one more time. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him, it is a sin. What are you thinking about? I'm not talking about like right now. When you're at home, what are you thinking about? When you're by yourself on the computer, what do you think about? When you're by yourself with this monstrosity, what are you thinking about? When you're with the boys that make you feel good, make you feel loose, what are you thinking about? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he see with you when you have a bad thought pattern it leads to bad decisions bad decisions lead to bad living do you get that write that down poor thinking poor thinking low quality cheap thinking leads to poor decision making poor decision making leads to poor lifestyle habits That's just a fact, man. What are you filling your mind with that eventually is going to help you make a decision when you find yourself in a situation? You see, if you're a priest of the Lord, your identity helps influence your thinking. And if your identity, when your identity influences your thinking, it helps you make better decisions. And your decisions will affect your present and your future. Many of us make wrong decisions because our minds are full of wrong thoughts. Our minds are full of junk. Can I say that again? Yes, thank you. Our minds are full of junk. Turn to your neighbor and say, what are you thinking about? Science has proven that the more you stare at something, the more you become like it. The more you stare at something, the more you become like it. I determined in my heart, I want to be like Jesus, so I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. Because I know how weak I am. Guys, listen to me. I'm a mess. Listen to me. I am a mess. I got issues. Just like all y'all, I got issues. So I've set up, I've set up barriers. I, mean, I, I know how I think. I'm 61. I, I know how I think. I know my patterns. I know what I put. What I, listen, I'm just one decision away from messing up my life. 
So I don't want to mess up my life. So I make sure I stay away from that one decision, that one decision that can destroy my life. We can't make right decisions because we have poor, we have poor basis of thought patterns. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15 says this, those who are spiritual can evaluate all things. Paul is saying right there, listen, all y'all who are spiritual, that means, listen, those who are spiritual are mature Christians. Spiritual men are mature Christians. In other words, you're, not, you're, not long, you're no longer uh, uh, depending on spiritual milk. You can actually eat some spiritual meat. Get some protein, baby, from the Word of God. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. In other words, people can't figure you out because your thinking patterns are, so, are totally different than theirs. Because you're thinking up here, you're not thinking down here. You're thinking like Jesus, you're not thinking like the world. You're thinking like God, you're not thinking like the devil. Spiritual thinking doesn't mean you're a spiritual airhead. It just means you know the difference between right and wrong and you choose to do right. Are you feel me? Verse 16, for who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. So when you start thinking junk, change the channel. Change the channel. Change the channel. You have the remote. It's located in your heart. It's called your identity. Change the channel. Think on things that are good and right and praiseworthy. Change the channel. Next, you know what else Jehoiada did? Understood his identity. He made a clear decision. He called on the source of his strength. Man, check it out. The Bible says here, he summoned his courage. He summoned his courage. Courage. To, to summon means to call on, to bring into account, to bring it up to point. Where is your courage, gentlemen? You have it. What are you doing with it? Why aren't you using it? If you have Jesus, then you have the Holy Spirit. You have God the Father. You have his presence. You have the blood. You have his name. You have his word. You have everything you need for spirituality. Where is your courage? Call on it. Where is your strength? Where are your convictions? The Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, he says, finally, in other words, now it's time for me to put a close to this book. So this is what I want to say. Finally, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Where? In the Lord. What I just say. Be strong. What I just say? Man, y'all, come on. Be strong. Where? In the Lord. In other words, become a Jesus freak. DC Talks, one of my favorite Christian bands back in the 90s. Yo, man, that's the theme song of my life, Jesus freak. I'm a walking billboard for God. So are you. We are all the glory of God in this dark world. That's what the word glory means. To wa we're a walking billboard. We represent, we represent God's image and likeness in us. Be strong in the Lord. Make a decision. Summon your courage. Get, stand up. Be strong. Summon your courage. Paul challenged us as Christians because we are up against three bloody athelias, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Satan is after you to destroy you. But he's not coming after you with all this power and all this might because he has none. 
The Gospels, are, and, 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 I'm sorry, Ephesians teaches us that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood for our sins, he disarmed the devil. The devil is not as strong as we make him out to be. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, might, and what? Sound mind. The way the enemy gets us is through manipulation and deception. He makes us believe we literally need that woman, even though you got a wife. He begins to manipulate us, saying, hey, listen, man, just 10 minutes on the laptop, man. It's not going to kill you, man. It's going to make you feel good. He makes us believe, man, you, gotta, you need to work more hours. You got to work more hours. You need, you need more money. You got to get that truck. When you get that truck, man, everyone's going to look at you. Whoa, they're going to say, whoa, look at him. Bobby be looking good in that truck. <laughs> in the city, it's not about the truck. It's about the wheels. Got to have them nice chromes. You got to get the spinners. Be strong in the Lord. You know how you get strong in the Lord? Three things you need to do to get strong in the Lord. Number one, you need a prayer life. You need a life of prayer. Oh, Pastor, I know that. I know that, but I'm reminding you. Number two, you need a habitual time of reading and studying and applying the scriptures. You need the Bible. You got to read 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 the Bible. You need to read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. You got to what? You got to pray. You got to read the Bible. You got to what? Number three, you need fellowship. You got to go to church. You got to go to church. You need to go to church on time. Y'all laughing. Y'all laughing because you know what I'm talking about. You need to go to church on time. Get your family up on time. Get them to church on time. He called on his strength and he exercised his strength. Here we go. I'm almost done. We are in a war, guys, for the souls of men. Ephesians 6.10 again, Paul, Paul continues, he says, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. My mom and my dad were both practicing witches. My mom and my dad were both practicing witches. My dad was a warlock. My mom was a, a witch. She had high-ranking position in the hood. They were called brujas. They, spirit, they were spiritualists. They practiced spiritism, Spanish style, under the banner of Catholicism. Most all my life. I can tell y'all stories. Woo-hoo! That's actually what, what encouraged me to go to church. I was in sixth grade. I would walk to church every Sunday because someone needed to pray for my family. My family was just messed up. Think about it. It probably happened in my house. Everything from violence and alcoholism and sexual immorality. My mom on Saturdays, every Saturday for about two or three hours, she would have her prayer sessions. She would mop the house with this nasty smelling pink potion stuff to, to protect their house from evil spirits. However, the house was full of them. So when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I was determined to pray for my mom. My dad had already left. That's, I'll tell you that story later on in the session. But my mom was like my, my everything. I was the youngest of four. So I prayed for my mom for four years to come out of spiritualism. This stuff with Satan is real. It's real. What he's doing to us, a lot of us Christians, he's making us think that he don't exist. Like he's not, he's, he's, no, 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 he exists. He's a punk, but he exists. See, we won when Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for us. We won. Yet, 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 we're in a fight. So Paul is like saying, step it up. Know your identity. Make a clear decision today to serve him 
summons your, summons your courage by spending time in the closet of prayer with the Word. And then lastly, go, go get your marching buddies. Isolation leads to sin. Isolation. I don't like being around him. Suck it up. Get around him. I got five accountability partners. I got five brothers in my life. They can ask me anything, 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 anything. And I'm obligated to tell them the truth. Everything from how I'm spending my money, my marriage, my thought life, my preaching, anything, anything. Because the moment you're held accountable, the chances of you messing up diminish greatly. Jehoiada said, listen, man, the job's too big for me. So he went and chose five army commanders. He got guys technically a little better than him. In order for you to step it up in your life, you need someone better at what you're already doing. Jim Ron, a famous, I love Jim Ron. I follow Jim Ron. Jim Ron died a lot of years ago. He's a, a wise man. He said, listen, you're the average of the five people you spend most time with. You spend time with losers, guess what? You're going to be a loser. You need someone doing something better than you and learn from them. Surround yourself with men who are going to help you pray. Surround yourself with men with the high standards of integrity and character. No one's perfect, but someone's a little better at something in your life than, than you are. He called five men of authority. And he challenged them. Say, said, guys, listen, man. Listen, guys, we got to. We got a job to do. How much time do I have left? I have no idea. Okay. Five men. Five men. If you can't find five men, at least have three men. If you can't find three men, at least two men. But have someone in your life that's going to help you be better in any area where you find yourself weak. Now, we will always have Weak areas, always. A weakness will always be a weakness. You cannot strengthen a weakness. A weakness is a weakness. So what do you do? You delegate that weakness to someone who will cover it. A strength, you can build a strength, but you cannot build a weakness. I have a weakness for, for um, I have a tendency, I'll be honest with you, I have a tendency of, of, of I, I, I like women. So I know how weak I am. So I do not watch any movies having to do with showing boobies or anything like that. I'm just, you know, I know what I'm talking about. I read a book years ago by Dr. Archibald Hart called The Sexual Man. The Sexual Man. Highly recommend you read the book called The Sexual Man by Dr. Archibald Hart. Read the book. The thesis of the book is... You need to learn to exercise self-control. So I keep myself healthy mentally by making sure that I do not watch anything with any kind of sexual content in it. And if I find myself drifting, I slap myself in the face, go, let's go. Focus on what's right. Anyone know what I'm talking about? It's probably just me. And all you guys are pretty strong. You see, I have a wife, 41 years, and I want to make sure that I'm a man of integrity and character. I want my wife to look at me and she said, and I want her to know my husband is loyal through and through to me. My, uh, my, uh, my, my husband is honest with me. He's attracted to me. Now, I'll see a pretty woman, oh, she's pretty, but that's about as far as it goes. Because I know me. I also have a tendency of overeating. I can, I can be a glutton. And what I'm talking about. The first serving was the warm up. The second serving was the meal. The third serving is the dessert. And then I get the sweets after that. I tend to overeat. So I got to make sure I take care of myself and not do that. So I, I, I you know what I'm saying? I set disciplines. Why? So, so that because when I get together with my, my marching buddies, they help hold me accountable. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26 says this, The righteous should choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. You need friends that will hold you accountable and to help you raise the standard of your life. So it's time to level up. 
it's time to muscle up. Some of us have, come, have not come to Jesus yet. Some of you guys here today, and you've been, you, man, you're playing games with Jesus. He's calling you into a relationship, and you keep on putting them off. You have not given your life to Jesus. It's time to do it today. Surrender. Some of us are too religious. We're really good with religion, but we're not following through with our relationship with God. We're playing games with Jesus. Some of us are committing adultery right now. You're married and you have, well, you have boom boom on the side. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's time for that to end right now. Time for that to end right now. Some of us are way, this pornography thing has gotten out of hand. That stuff's got to end. Your body belongs to God. It's time for self-sex. That's got to end. You're not a pervert. You're a man of God. You're not a dog. You're a man of God. That stuff's got to end. Some of us are confused with our identity. We know we're a man, but we're attracted to other men. You need counseling. Go get help. You're not a freak. You're just a guy that's got an issue that needs to be dealt with. But you're still a man of God. Can I get an amen? I'm just talking stuff that's legit. This stuff's going on in our house, man, and in our world. It's got to end. We got a generation of people coming after us that are looking for men that will present them and say, listen, here's a future king, and we are the ones that set them up for future impact. Bow your heads, close your eyes with me. The Lord Jesus Christ is here right now, and he's calling you to the carpet. If you fall under any one of those categories, or you're fighting depression and anxiety, you love being alone, or you think being alone is the best thing. We got all these issues. I need you to do, me, do yourself a favor and give your life to Jesus legitimately. I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to pray for you. But I don't know if you mean business until you do some kind of a physical act. When I count to three, I'm going to ask you to stand up if you need prayer for any of those issues. And I'm going to hold you accountable that during the break time, any time of their day, you can talk to me or the, or, or the bishop or any other man of God that's here and say, listen, man, I'm struggling with this issue. I need you to pray for me or I need counseling. I need to talk to my wife. I'm going to call her off with this woman. Whatever's going on, that stuff needs to end today. One. If you need prayer, I need you to stand. Two, it's time to make a clear decision to change for the glory of God. Three, I'm going to pray. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 It's time for us to be honest. Amen. Lift up your hands, brothers. All of you guys who are standing. All the others who are, who are around, anyone who's standing, put hands on him. If you're around him, put hands on him and pray over him. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you so much that you've called us here today. We're not here, Lord, to waste anyone's time. We're here, Father, to be built up, to be sharpened for the glory of God. Father God, I pray that you deliver us. Those of us, Father God, who are playing games, those of us who, who, are, who, are, who need to be held accountable for what we're doing with our lives, forgive us of our sins, Lord, I pray. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all of immorality. Pull us out of this darkness, God, and bring us into the divine revelation of Jesus. Meet the need, meet the hurt inside of our hearts, Lord, I pray, that we may begin to live lives of integrity and character to make clear decisions, to summon our strength, and to call on brothers to live life with. I pronounce these blessings upon us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you guys. Amen.